everybody doesn't know i'm going to hawaii for the first time tomorrow i'm pretty excited uh, i've Jones. never been i'm going to the big island uh the kona side nice. so i'll be there from friday all the way to sunday the 24th my birthday so that's great heck yeah and this is crazy because like this is the first time i've been on a vacation for myself in a really long time you know i'm used to like traveling for fights or anytime i do travel usually it's it's for one of you guys uh, you know for work and and fighting or, or previously for family so i'm excited yeah. just to kind of go hang out and do my thing you've been to hawaii cody never i've always wanted to go um Never actually, I have one of my new little bullies, Anakin. He's there, so I gotta see what island he's on, and maybe I can get you guys connected. He's um, high demand clothing, high demand bullies. The other guys really connected in the community, so I don't know if he's on there. But Kona, they have some of the best coffee, so definitely go to some coffee spots. No man, I've been uh, I've been writing down Jones. all the things I want to do, and drinking Kona coffee is one of them snorkeling is on the list i want to take a private lesson surfing because i've only been surfing one time and no one's actually uh, we you know we went to uh casey slater or what was it casey slater <laughs> i don't know if it was kelly slater's was it kelly, oh, slater? kelly slater dude was, i don't know if he had some part of that but i know remember no we no there. the one in austin me and cody went to a surf <laughs> oh that's what we could talk about let's let's talk about that when we went to oh. the surf park in austin we went with uncle bob Danny, last call, Castillo, and then it was me and Cody. <laughs> and Andrew Craig, the silver surfer. Oh, yeah, Andrew Craig. And then Andrew he Craig. He's like nine, nine months, uh, nine months. He's had these mushrooms in his, uh, he brought the bag of mushrooms. Hey, these good to eat. Like, Stale oh, old mushrooms. And he gave us all like a little, a little piece. And I, I'm not going to lie. I felt it a little bit too. Uh, it Dude. wasn't like, boom, it hit you like, you know, <laughs> a sledgehammer. It but, hit me. <laughs> it definitely hit me i couldn't get up on that damn board man i kept looking on the top of the wave i kept going in everyone chris was the freaking surfing kyle bunga guy throwing up narbar <laughs> me and bob I'm, I'm doing just as bad as bob but the thing is bob wouldn't even get up um on the board he would just oh i was laughing back. so hard <laughs> he was those things would whip you around those would whip you around. those things that's a work an hour of just getting beat up trying to get on a, it's surfing is tough you know, I can only yeah, imagine so and see with the current and the ocean. Like, yeah. wow. What we're so talking about is a, a man-made surf park in Austin, Texas. There's like literally this tractor looking thing in the middle of this body of water. And it pushes the water at a high speed and it, it makes a man-made wave. And it's not, they're not big waves, but they're just fun enough to get on and, and, and jump on a surfboard. So we went, we, we all went, ate a little bit of mushrooms. Bob didn't eat them, but me uh, you danny and craig uh, yeah. and it was fun i kept looking back to see if like bob got on a wave he just kept like falling off <laughs> whole hour dude it just looked like he just got beat up on i rode one wave it was towards the end and i got on one i was like all right awesome well i was like i, I did i was like bob you're lying you, you didn't get up on a one. he goes well i body surfed it he kept saying he body surfed it and I was like, Dying. but there's levels there's pro levels that are on the other side we were at like an advanced level to get you know you know to get up on the waves, but they're the the pro side. Those those waves were pretty gnarly. I I don't want to. Yeah, that was on. so much fun. I want to go to the Kelly Slater one. That's like in Fresno. I know Fabio has been trying to oh. link that up. He keeps telling Let's Fabio, like, "Come on, link it up, link it up." Yeah, we reach yeah. out to Kelly. Um, I just actually saw one of his ads. I was you know just browsing through Instagram and saw one of his ads for a clothing company that he was a partner with. So it popped up online. It's finally bring that up. So yeah, Fresno's not too close. We'll make a little, a little trip out of it. Uh, that was definitely a great time. Always a good time in Austin, you know, going out and see the aunt and family and, you know, open doors with them whenever we want to go out there and train, you know, obviously we went out there for the Joe Rogan as well. So Texas is a great time, good place. That was a fun time. I remember Bob just was so wore out in the drive home. and Danny kept looking back at him. What's wrong, Bob? Looks like you just went through two divorces. And he's like, I'm tired. I'm to take it out of you. I was yeah, so going back uh hopefully i get to take a surf lesson and, and go on a bunch of cool hikes but uh, i'm excited about that hikes. before we press record you were telling me a uh, update about your weight and you know training and everything uh you know tell everybody tell all the homies out there you know where oh, the weight's man. at <laughs> where the so weight's good, at man. how's everything going how's training going in jersey let's let's get the rundown yeah training's going really great you know we got frankie coming up um, November 6th, Madison Square Garden. He's looking phenomenal. So we're 
basically piggybacking off each other in camp, you know, I'm helping out, you know, I've been here for the last, I would be here for six weeks of his camp and that catapults me into mine. So I'm eight weeks out on Saturday for my fight, feeling great, hitting the marks with the dietitian and the doctor that uh, are doing my nutrition diet plan. Uh, we wanted to hit 43 this week. We hit 41. Um, so, and I'm, you know, after practice this morning, I was 38, even feeling great, feeling strong. You know, that was my first practice. Still had to go through another practice, you know, an intense went to the Rutgers University and wrestled with um, a lot of all those Division One uh, collegiate wrestlers that just it is just a different. Can you tell? Animal. Can you just give us a, a breakdown of what that practice? Because uh, I want to know personally, and I, I'm sure everyone out there wants to know what like a a university level wrestling practice is for like a MMA fighter. So it was, it was, man, it was. Um, like, what'd you guys do? There. Like, what kind of warm up? What kind of drills? Are oh, you guys we, doing? we do a warm up and then we get into like two for two shots. You know, we're just setting up the shots, you know, getting, getting going. And then, you know, go, go for that. We really drilled for at that level of high intensity two for two where you're touching each other the whole time, you're snapping, you're dragging, you're setting up pulls, you know, you know, misdirection shot, you know. So we did a lot of those um, different entries, you know get them off, get them off balance, shoot, you know, they defend, shoot the other way, you know, misdirection, um, do posts, do snaps, do, you know, do throw bys, duck unders, all entry ways to getting to the back and then trying to trip them, you know, get them off direction and go another way. So by constantly making them, when you get in, you're constantly making them move, you're moving the movement. So they're not staying still. You see a lot of these fighters go in there and they throw these punches in and they get stuck on the leg and they just hold there. Well, you, know, you got to push, pull, get that bounce off, or that guy can just stand there. So uh, the cl collegiate level is constant movement, constant work, nonstop touching, you know, to get in better, you know, placement to score offensively and defensively. Um, so it's a lot of, lot of work up downs, you know, um, you know, mat returns, working back up, gathering the hands, you know, redirections of shot, shot, reshots. He misses, you shoot. Then you do some defense work. You got to do it both ways. Um, you go into uh, a five minute um, spar session, they call it, where the guy comes in on a shot. As soon as he touches your hips, bam, it's on. You know, like you let him get in on the hips and it's live. So he he's got the momentum. So he's going to drive you and then it's live from there. And you, and you switch. So when you break or you take down or breaks action or breaks, you know, control on them, you know, if you're in a two on one or anything, that's still live go. Um, and then you go out and you go back to, you know, two for two drills. Um, that would be like shot reshot. So you're a high level. I mean, heart rate. Yeah, and then sounds exhausting. If, exhausting. For everybody out good. there that's never yeah. been, you know, in a wrestling practice or seen a wrestling, a high level wrestling practice, it's probably the the hardest aspects yeah. of uh, mixed martial arts or one of the most physical and demanding um, parts 100%. of, uh, you know, getting ready for a fight is is doing that hard wrestling. It's one thing just doing shots and takedowns, but in a, you know, Cody's talking about a collegiate wrestling room. Um, it's one of the, the the toughest things you can do to get ready. So, man, I'm stoked to hear you're doing all that. So I just know you're going to be in, in tremendous shape and your wrestling's going to be on point. Um, you know, you'd be able to showcase, you know, some, some, yeah. some more grappling, you know, this fight. That, yeah, that'll be yeah, awesome. Definitely. It's, it's tough. No one, no one's seen the submission, the, the submission hunter in Cody yet. Uh, he's yeah. got submissions. Uh, he just likes to sling them and, and bang them. <laughs> I do, I do, but I enjoy the full, you know, well roundness up, down, the full, you know, the up downs. And that's something that will break an opponent in there that's not, not ready for that. You know, it thinks, oh, I got the hands like this. And when you cut, you know, that wrestling pace. And that's another thing, you know, to really highlight wrestling as a whole it is a just that's why the wrestlers are so dominant because these kids are in there and they have morning morning practice okay so this coach comes in bring in guys all right we got two groups you know first groups on the mat hour and a half you know drilling live goes the other group is weight training so when that group comes in and done you flip-flop you know eight and eleven so then they were telling things, all right, we've got uh, a triathlon tomorrow. He's like, make sure, you know, uh, Coach Goodell is a great coach. You know, get ready for what you need. You know, you need to do 20 laps, and everyone's counting them down, back, down, back. You're doing 20 laps, and then you're doing whatever, uh, how many miles of run it was, and then right on to the bike. So he's like, you know, telling them, like, here, you guys got to get ready for this triathlon. This is this, this you know, mini triathlon. 
that we're doing and you know we're racing each other you know different groups are coming in so make sure when you get out of the pool every second counts because it's a time race so you want to get done finished first so you know for them they had other, another practice as well after that one on top of schooling and depriving Dude, themselves of, of food of food to yeah, go to the classes and energy so the, like wrestlers are just collegiate style division one wrestling is just a different beast completely crazy grind that's why a lot of the fighters come out of you know those those high prolific programs and like wow it's nice we only get to wrestle a couple times a week well here we're wrestling more time i don't think we're wrestling about the same i think we're wrestling four to five times a week on top of the sparring on top of the pad work you know we're sparring twice we're doing twice pad work we're doing four to five times of grappling um, <laughs> wrestling grappling um drills and live goes so just that that can there's nothing like wrestling that can get you prepared for a fight <clears throat> Yeah, for sure. And uh, man, let's talk about Slava, Slava Claus, the, the big, another back to back weeks, you know, another team alpha male, you know, fighter made it into the UFC. We had last week, Mike Malat with, with the quick Whoa. first round guillotine. And then we had Slava, Slava Claus. Um, man, I can't even pronounce his last name. Can you pronounce his last Borsvich? name? Borsvich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, better job than I can. Uh, Crazy, crazy lead hook, left hook, knockout, right on the button, right on the money. Couldn't have landed any, any, any more perfect. Uh, second round knockout, and you know, you know, Dana loves, loves a good scrap, loves a good striker. So I can tell Dana was pretty excited to to get get Slava signed to the UFC. Um, what do you think about? For one, he he rocked the guy pretty hard, yeah. and that dude had to switch game plans, and he was like, "All right, I got to take this guy down." And he did, and he did <laughs> what he needed to do, but Slava stayed tight. I knew that was going to be a tough fight. That kid, you know, taking nothing away from him, Slav is world-class striker and has only improved so much from getting out here to DM Alpha Male. I mean, he literally has a work ethic that's, you know, high up there on the team. So I knew the kid was going to be um, – once he got the wrestling and grappling confidence down, like the strike, there's no one that's going to be able to strike with this kid. Like, I just hardly believe it. Yeah. And now that he's blending it together and he's only been doing MMA. So he's what, six and one now, you know, he's under 10 professional fights. Um, just, just how he, you know, picked in the guy apart, you know, and the guy started coming back, whether, you know, whether the storm, like it was tough. Um, was able to take him down, but, you know, solid stayed calm, you know, with those takedowns, the guy got his back, stayed there, got was able to work up. Um, definitely one of the first round came out the second round I was like, all right, I, I, I'm going to finish this. And um, that was an awesome. You know, the guy threw the right hand in was slow and saw, you know, just kind of leaned back with it and followed his hook or followed it back with his uh, left hook. And it's, it's textbook. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, you know, he wasn't too impressed with us, oh, nothing, you know what I mean? But that's that simple, you know, the one throws a right, you roll back with it and, and, and follow his back, and that's what he did, which is so slow. And uh, like it was tough, you know, taking nothing from him. He gave yeah, the other guy awesome was an undefe undefeated fighter, a tough guy. A lot look, he looked bigger than Slava. Mm -hmm. and, you know, Slava came to the team four years ago from Russia with a, yeah. you know, an extensive amateur, and you know, he was a kickboxing, hundreds of fight, uh, kickboxing, and you know, he's got <laughs> boxing fights came to the team with no grappling experience whatsoever. And I, the one thing I remember, cause he was doing my class right off the bat, trying to learn jujitsu and stuff. I remember he just had this one outfit. It was this one rash guard that had like a bunch of weed leaves all over it. And I was like, dude, this guy, who, who is this Russian dude with this cool rash guard? Yeah. Um, and then, but like, he had no idea. He just was like, Oh, like I, <laughs> I have no idea. And he, that was like his go-to like uniform for, for months. Um, yeah. That one and the bumblebee one. But <laughs> what I liked about Slava was that he got in those classes and he under, understood like he needed to improve in this area for his MMA yeah. career to take off. And he put the work in. And what I love seeing Slava do inside of sparring rounds is he'll strike with you and, and do that. But he's trying to take you down a lot he's going for shots you know he might not get them but he's he's going and shooting and making himself shoot a lot of times during the round and learning that ground game getting on the ground because you know he knows his, his stand-up is so superior so very excited for him and not only him but a lot to get into the ufc as well so two huge new signees from team alpha Man that's been here for a while paid their dues um you know give back to the team 
And just happy for both of those dude, Mike Malat with a quick first round submission and Slava Claus, a second round vicious knockout. And, you know, that one got Dana super pumped up. You know, like I said, Dana loves entertaining fights and someone that's going to go out there and fight. So uh, Slava's getting his confidence and I'm excited to see him mix it up in the the lightweight division. Yeah, you know, a guy that just, you know, is having another baby. He came, he came to America with his wife, you know, made sacrifices it's big to travel all the way from Russia and make those sacrifices, have a kid. He's having a second kid. And to finally, you know, his dream to get in the UFC and finally, you know, have that performance and get in. Like, I feel for the guy, man. That's got to be a, a great moment for him and his family. Like, um, you know, it just shows that everything paid off and he's on the right track, right? Awesome. Um, so happy. So, <clears throat> all right, let's talk about your your – your card December 11th, man. I keep looking at this card and just more crazy, crazy fights are being added. Uh, just announced Dustin Poirier and Charles Oliveira is fighting for the, for the strap. That that's the headliner. Am I correct? That is the headliner. Yes. That is the headliner. Yeah. Yeah. And then what is it? Nunez? Recently was Atlanta? added was no, we had the, as the co-main and what recently was added was William Mazadal and Leon Edwards. Yes. So they bumped Figueredo and Moreno off that car and put them to January. Um, and then Dominic Cruz versus Pedro Munoz on that one. Myself versus Kai Car France. And um, the Sugar Free Show is fighting Julian Raul. Yeah, Aram. bro. So I don't know if you know, but um, Josh Emmett is supposed to fight on December 11th, too. He's awesome, right on. Ar- Arnold Allen. Uh, oh, wow. They've been trying to get that strap. He, he just told me today he doesn't have the contract yet, but they both agreed on it. And awesome. uh, it's, it's looking it's like that's going that, to like that's gonna happen. And then Macy Barber is fighting. She just oh. got that new opponent. So there's oh, like man. there's like four people from the team fighting that night. And then all these other crazy fights too. Like I'm super excited for, of course, my guys, you, of course. But like the Dustin Poirier, he, you know, he's, I, I'm a big Dustin Poirier fan. I like yeah, watching my, and Oliver has like always been one of my favorite jujitsu guys to watch. So I'm excited just to be there and, and uh, watch these live. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, oh, Ryan, Hall's, Ryan Hall's fighting De- uh, Derek Minner on that too. Yeah. And with the crowd. Man. So it's Man, gonna be there's awesome. a lot of good fights on that. Jeff Neal. First time with yeah. me with an audience. So that's going to be awesome. I'm excited for the crowd. You know, that's going to be fun to go out there and have my flyweight debut and, and, and win in devastating fashion. And yeah, you know, so no, for sure. Do you, uh, of course, we don't know how the, how the cards going to be laid out yet, but I'm sure Cody, you'll be on the main card. Anger. Uh, I, yeah. Um, but yeah, any, well, what, what fight besides yours stands out that you, you look forward to watching on that one? Oh, uh, there's so many. Um, you know, obviously you Dustin mean, Oliver. You mean one or two. Dustin Oliver, you know, Dustin, I'm sorry, Dustin uh Poy and Oliveira. Charles yeah, Oliveira. That's a, just they blend it together so well. You know? Who you got? Who you got in that one? I just think Dustin is uh, is too well rounded, yeah. you know, enough to stop his jiu-jitsu if it were to go to the ground and just so durable and stays in your face. And Oliver has known the break when the pressure gets, you know really brought to him and Dustin boy is in your face nonstop, but um, Oliver is coming on as well, but I'm going to take Dustin on this fight. Just overall, I think he blends it the best with mixed martial arts, the wrestling, the jiu-jitsu, the striking and the crazy, you know, punch out, but Dustin is a, a slick southpaw as well. I got Dustin Poirier as well. I, I don't see Charles Oliver being able to t- uh, take Dustin down and use his jiu-jitsu like he's been able to do it on everybody else. Poirier has been a black belt for a while. He, he, he's got a good jiu-jitsu game himself, and uh, his striking is, you know, top of the game as well. What about I'm, – I'm interested – you you fought both the guys, Dominic and Pedro Munoz. Who do you think is going to take that one? Dominic Cruz. I think Dominic Cruz, the key to beating Pedro is, is movement and, and combinations, you know, um, and, and staying away from the low calf kick is what's Pedro's probably best punch overhand, right? You know, things like that. And I think Mo- Dominic comes in shape and keeps his movement up. It's not going to be a problem. But then again, you know, if, you know, Pedro lands a couple of those, you know, calf kicks and slows him down. So I, I think Cruz will have the upper hand and the movement and, you know, Pedro's kind of, well, you know, he likes to, you know, sit and slang him, 
And, you know, when you move on and, 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 and pop shot and do that, like I was having my way with them. But when you're sitting right in front of anybody in a fight, you're giving them a 50 50 chance, uh, uh, you know, to, to win. So I think I'm going to go with Dominic um, as well. I don't think Pedro was able to take Dominic down either. Um, Pedro really doesn't wrestle too much in a lot of his fights for being a high level black belt. Um, so I think Dominic Cruz will, you know, probably decision him. I'm going to go with that same call just because I feel Dom's footwork, he's going to be hard to hit with those calf kicks. He's going to be hard to hit with those overhand rights. Um, he, I, he's going to try to outpoint Pedro, you know, maybe maybe try to sneak in a couple takedowns at the end of the round. Um, and I, I see Pedro getting, you know, frustrated and trying to chase Dom down after a while. And he might have success, like, uh, you know, rushing and, and tagging him coming forward. But, you know, Dom's a hard puzzle to figure out. And, man, but I, I, it's hard to count Munoz out because he always has a yep. trick up his sleeve. So, um, it's tough. Yeah. I'm going with Dom. I'm going with Dom. Let's see what Dom shows up. And if, if he's the classic Dom in shape, no injuries, uh, I think he's got that one. All right, let's go to our Q&A segment. Let's get a couple questions in. Um, all right, first question. Will Cody fight for the strap after his next win? At Sam underscore seven seven. Seven seven. Most definitely. That's what uh, you know, I was supposed to fight for this trap. Obviously got COVID. You know, I was supposed to the only reason I took the Rob Font fight was because of the draw and the rematch with the Moreno and Figueredo fight. So I didn't want to be sidelined for that long, even though I was knew I was going down the flyweight, took the Rob Font fight to stay active. Obviously didn't go my way. Um, you know, I think this weight class is gonna be a huge just difference in my overall performances for the remainder of my career uh, to stay down here and possibly if I need to move up, move up. But um, yeah, Steph, that's what we spoke about is, you know, winning this fight and yeah, fighting for the title match. So. Nice. I like, I like the sound of that. Yeah. All right. Next question. What is your diet like outside of camp? What's your cheat meal at Chevy 995? Uh, oh man. I, I usually eat pretty clean, you know. I think that for me, I like I don't like to try to blow up too too much in the off season, just because I'm always training and I don't want to carry that extra weight around. Um, I just don't feel best when I'm doing that. Um, but my I would say my cheat meal, if you want to call it a cheat meal, it would be sushi. I absolutely love sushi, uh, rice, <laughs> you know, um, you know, hitting up the Coonies a lot. I'm definitely missing that. Uh, but yeah, probably after this fight, I may probably blew up a little bit when I hold on to some, you know, weight. Obviously, I'm cutting some uh, more weight than I ever have. So, you know, I might retain some, I will blow up a little bit, but I'm starting to crave a little bit of things. So I'm not having them, you know, and I, you know, uh, so I can, I can see maybe after this, fight, give myself a couple of days of just splurging a little bit, get off the grid. Yeah. yeah now you'll, you'll know how I felt when I had to make 135 and, you know, I don't fight anymore, but I'm going to jump in on this question because, you know, when I had to make 135, I had to be really disciplined. And I'm sure it's it's similar to what Cody has to do now for 125. And you're cutting things out of your diet. You're not eating certain things. You're not going out to eat. You're probably making your own meal or you're eating a lot of, you know, prepared meals. And, man, I blew up after fights. I could not control myself. And you know, I got to – I remember the first time I made 135 – I ate a whole case of oatmeal frosting cookies and I blew up to like one, 168, like in the matter of like probably two or three days, 168. And, but it, it was a bad 168 to where like I was just bloated. I remember I went to, I went to go train like the next day to try to like uh, wear something down and I was getting tapped out with all types of stuff. I never, I never got tapped out with because like my body was just, I couldn't move. Like, yeah, so right. who applied on me? I'm like, ah! and my shoulders was just like hurt. So yeah. I try like not to do that every time, but it's hard when you when when you diet that long and then when you win a fight, especially and you're like celebrating. Oh, oh it's hard not to blow up. But I'm going to. Like I said, a couple of days, a couple of days, I'll, <laughs> you know, what I want to eat and then get back to eating clean. Yeah. I'm not even really into eating like that because I just feel so much better. No, yeah, you never, you don't really eat bad or eat a lot in general, so yeah, but uh, you don't never have you know, to like, worry so about that. Weight, so we've got some so might might change a little bit. <laughs> All right, next question: What is it like 
uh, I guess this is going to be for me. Uh, what is it like to corner fighters when they win compared to when they lose uh, at JT80? Um, man, you know, the, the wins are, of course, you know, um, you know, you're all super happy of the accomplishment and, you know, your, your guy, people just think, you know, they go out there on fight night and boom, he wins. And, but there's months, there's years, there's blood, there's sacrifice that goes into that one night for that, for those 15 or 25 minutes, like a lot goes into that. So for me, when, when my guys win guys, I'm cornering, like, it's just a, a, a fill of, of joy and success, like mission accomplished, you know, for one, I want to make sure my guys are not injured. Uh, that, that's number one. And, you know, make sure they're, they're healthy after the fight, but we win we, we like to celebrate. We'll go party. And uh, of course yeah, um, I'm always super critical. So like, I, you know, I look for the things that our guys did well, but I'm also looking for the things I feel like we, we didn't do so well and we could have changed. And I, I save it. I, I don't tell them right after the fight. I try to save it a little bit cause I don't want to like destroy their night or whatever and be super critical. Um, but on the other side of things, you know, when guys lose, cause I I've been on both sides of it. Um, you have you just have to be there for them. And I, I think that's, what's most important, you know, be there for them and, and don't change if it's a win or loss. Like I, I'm the same person to my guys, you know, if we win or if we lose, you know, no one likes losing. Um, you know, we all have to, we all have to deal with the loss and I just try to, um, you know, comfort the guys and, you know, tell them to keep their chin up and try to, you know, focus on where we made mistakes and what we can improve on. And you can't really harp on things too long because when you do, that's when you really start getting depressed and start really thinking about, um, oh, I should have did this. I should have done that. So you figure out what could have been done differently. You talk with your coaches, you, you, you figure out things that you're going to change and you move on. What, what's your plan of attack for this next fight? Uh, let's keep it pushing forward and uh, move on to the next thing. So good question. Good question. All right. Last question. How is dating life like while in camp? Uh, at Ali Casa Jonders or um, this is not for me because I'm not in camp. Um, and I don't know Cody's situation. Uh, so is this a <laughs> is this a viable question for you, Cody? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean. Well, I'll tell him. Actually, let me, let me start off with it. So I remember when I fought. So I never had a girlfriend ever. Like I, training and martial arts was like number one for me, and I felt like a girl getting in between, especially a relationship, was like it was like the cooties. I was like, nope, not gonna let it happen. I got goals. And I remember I started like, you know, after the ultimate fighter, I started to talk to, you know, talk to this girl and dude, during fight week, she started getting crazy on me, like crazy, like blowing me up with messages. And like, I was like, Whoa, compared to like before, like the ultimate fighter, like when I didn't have any of that, you know, now that I'm like, talk, yeah. like <laughs> and I'm like, dude, kick this girl to the curb. I was like, so I think for dating while in camp is should be, you shouldn't date too much. I think you should stay focused. Um, you know, you got your eyes on the prize. Um, for me, that that always worked for me. You know, some other guys might be different. They might need that release. But you know, uh, there's a difference between that going release. and wa wasting it. There's a difference between going out there and wasting energy, like going on dates, compared to just having. Uh, you know, a girl come over and you guys hook up and you get a release, you know what I mean? Or like you get a massage or something like that. So I mean, yeah, there's nothing all, wrong with that. No, there's all energy expenditure, but it's like, like <laughs> I would just probably just say as a whole, like girls are probably get bored of going on dates with fighters that are in camp because yeah, you can't go out and drink. You can't really go out and eat from a strict diet. You can't go out late. You really can't. And, you know, I mean, if it's first couple of days, we go and take them to the movies and just sit there and watch, you know, stare at them in between. <laughs> like, you know what I mean, like, it's, it's just tough. It's tough. So, I mean, like, there's really not much time to be in on dates on a fight camp. Like you said, I think you should just stay very focused on the task at hand. But obviously, you know, I mean, you do need that release, too. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, see, see you at a massage parlor, huh? 
<laughs> like Chris a couple times in there. He was walking in. I was walking out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, man. All right, man. I think we covered all the questions, all the topics. That was a that was a good one. And I just wanted to give a shout out to everybody out there. I've been getting a lot of good feedback from everybody that you know you've been telling me you've been liking the podcast. This is our fifth episode, and wow. I feel like you know it's just going to get better. We're just going to you know get more comfortable with things, and we're going to start having guests on. We're going to have some cool guests on here, and you know get some cool questions and just kind of give you guys a, a side of uh, people's lives that you might not know and, you know, try to make it fun for you. Thank you. Yeah, any, fi excited. any finishing uh, thoughts, Cody? Just excited for some cool stuff to happen. Like you said, cool, everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then we, we got, got the travel show really, coming up. Yeah. The travel show got the sprinter van coming. So uh, yeah, yeah. You showed me the picture of that sprinter van. It's going yeah, down. Yep, yeah, It's going down. <laughs> so we're coming to some dojos. We're going to be balancing, giving out OSAs and uh, giving out some amazing seminars meeting some incredible people we're very excited for that um and we're with the homies all right shout out to all the homies out there make sure you guys like subscribe to the channel show us some love comment share us on uh, instagram tag us and we'll repost it all right we'll see you guys next time peace